I remember I wanted JE because it was kind of like Branford, which my sister went to, but not really. And I do like the Gothic architecture, but um, I was just glad I didn't get more so styles. I was like, yeah. And I told myself I wanted to be in like Grace Hopper or Branford. Then I got Franklin and I was like, oh, interesting. And, and I was like, as long as I just don't get the new colleges, like it's fine, like it'll be so fun. <laughs> and then I got it. Yeah, I was really sad when I opened it. I was like, oh darn, like no tradition, no spirit, like I don't even know who these people are, <laughs> like, and it's named Benjamin Franklin. Yale's been using the residential college system for over 70 years now. It's one of the most defining features of campus life at the school, as the students live in their residential colleges for the entirety of their undergrad. Each college has its own traditions and is marketed by the admissions office as a microcosm of the Yale community. Before freshmen even arrive on campus, they are randomly assigned to one of the 14 residential colleges. This is often the cornerstone of your Yale community and institutional identity. In 2017, Yale opened two new residential colleges, Polly Murray and Benjamin Franklin. I was actually the first staff employee hired for both colleges. So initially I supported Murray and Franklin. Um, I, came, I worked in Yale facilities for 10 years prior and I knew everything about this project because my uh, department funded it. The project manager of record on it was uh, John Olson who um, also built the school of management here and Dimio Construction was the construction manager on the job um, and then uh, Robert A.M. Stern Architects were the architects on it. He used to be the dean of Yale School of Architecture. Um, and so the original design they wanted to keep with James Gamble Rogers designs for eight of the other colleges that were built in the 30s. They wanted to make it a modern building but with um, traditional James Gamble Rogers design, the neo-gothic sort of stuff. So, um, so if you look around you can see the stained glass windows um, in between like just regular panes, that's kind of a James Gamble Rogers thing. Um, the what they're called grapevines, they look like cracks in the window, that's a James Gamble Rogers thing. Um, the southern elevations having um, being lower for light, that's a James Gamble Rogers thing. So, so many hours that first summer, Melissa and I were like here all the time. At one point, um, it was like eight o'clock at night and I was walking out and um, Prof T from um, Murray said, Suzanne, go home to your family. And I'm like, you're my family now. I'm here all the time. So I have the weirdest job on earth. I really do have the strangest job. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, one time I was making an order for condoms and my son's friend who was 15 at the time, he said to my son, what does your mom do for work? <laughs> and he's like, oh, she just works at a college. Oh, okay. Everyone's experience from Franklin is gonna be really different because it just like really depends. It's like pretty random. And then two, it's like, because there's no established culture, like whatever you are coming from is kind of like how you're gonna interact with the space. And I had very positive experiences and kind of like bought into, let me make these relationships here, I think. and. It's not, but like then like talking to them and realizing their reasons, like it can feel super isolating being in Franklin and it is not super easy when people, when like you feel like people have already bought in and like you, there's no way for you to enter into that social scene or, or like feel like the food is enough to justify why you're here, you know, especially when um, there's not a super tight-knit community. It's not like Trumbull where there's 70 people per grade that like all know each other and kind of like grow up together. Like pockets of Franklin are growing up together and sometimes it, that can feel a little isolating. And They gave us all like, the quarantine bags, right? And so everyone got milk. And like, there's a surprising amount of like lactose intolerant people in Franklin. And so I remember like, I don't know, for the two weeks there was this like running joke about like milk, like milk would just like show up at your door sometimes if like people wanted to be friends with you, you know? You like have milk and you'd be like, oh, thanks. And you'd like go give the milk to someone else because you wanted to like make friends with people. One of the ways I got so involved with Franklin so quickly was like working at the buttery. And I don't know, it's like because of its like youth, I guess, it's just everyone seemed really like approachable and everything seemed really approachable. I remember just walking down to the buttery one day and Spencer was there 
I don't think I knew who Spencer was, but I was like, I would like to work at the buttery. And he was like, okay. I later found out he actually didn't have the power to do that, but he did. He like just did it. I was like, great, I work at the buttery now. Oh, I forgot the buttery. Yeah. So my sweet mate, she was the buttery manager last year. She worked in the buttery our first year. And so I spent a lot, a lot of time in the buttery. And just like the music that people are playing, the, the atmosphere, maybe it's like the way it was also like designed to be so opened rather than like cut off like walls to separate booths or something. Um, it's just very casual and comfortable. Um, and like it always smells like fried food, which is soothing in some ways. I think we called, the group chat called it Ben's butt. Um, it's like the Franklin butt more formally the Franklin Buttery. It, we kind of just evolve it to how we feel fit. And so part of the reason Franklin got so popular is because we had delicious deep fried food for really cheap prices. Um, and then we realized we put ourselves in debt for like the tune of $10,000. This was like by the end of fresh first year fall semester. Going into spring semester, we were like, how do we make this better? Snack pack. And then Franklin became known as like the buttery that had snack pass and it was so extra but everyone loved it and then we found out snack pass although we got more business we had to pay snack pass fees so we ended up in even more debt um and then sophomore year we kind of got a clean slate daddy yearly raised the debt um we just had to make sure we didn't go back in debt um, first year i would say it's like the seminar rooms became like the hangout, the hangout study space for like all the first years. First, there are only two first year suites on my floor, B42 um, and B44, and right below are the seminar rooms there. So we would just hang out, play music, study, use the whiteboards, and the frocos would always be really nice and like prop the door open in the evening so we could use it because I don't think technically that's allowed. I'm not really sure. Um, but that was like a very fun space, a lot of like Uber Eats to that location at like really odd hours. I think it was just like a matter of like, I felt, it felt so easy to cultivate a community here in Franklin and like everything came so naturally. I was also just like lucky that like all the ro roles that I fell into like contributed to building community, like working in the buttery. I like met so many people and like everyone even if they didn't know my name, they were like, they knew where to find me. They were like, I can't, if I need to find that girl, I just have to go to the buttery and then there she will be. I don't know, it just feels like a very personalized community. Like I know Head Berlin, we have a dog, Lucy, you know, you know the dining hall staff. Um, and I feel like, yeah, in other years, like going out to classes and stuff, I would have gotten less like used to the spaces in Franklin, but like going to the common room like late at night all the time with friends or like the butter you like it feels like home because you go there every single day um so i surprisingly like i love franklin's architecture and normally i hate colonial architecture which is why i hated harvard's campus um but like Franklin is a combination of the two because it's like accented with gothic and it, it was like I remember getting a tour and they talked about building this for the first time and they were so extra that on brand new windows they purposely cracked it to reseal it to give it cracks and I was like that like point peak extraness is my vibe <laughs> and it's just like it's so pretty and colored like the windows have like random glass stains and it's beautiful and the top layer of like tile that is like for some reason, there's like purple tiles mixed in with blue. It's just so beautiful. I remember my first year kind of walking around the Franklin courtyards and specifically the first year courtyard because that's just where I lived and looking at the stone etchings and drawings and phrases that they put on top of the arches connecting the courtyards together. And one thing I realized is that there's one stone etching of with a yin yang symbol and a phoenix on the right and a dragon on the left and i kind of just i remember seeing it for the first time and really just standing there being thinking like huh so this is what franklin's about it was just an interesting uh hodgepodge of western combined western architecture but combining with eastern culture and i think it just really speaks to 
Franklin's goofiness and how it chooses to put things together and kind of um, create this collage or like you wouldn't really see any of that, like any phoenix or dragon in any other college that was built before 1950. And I think it just adds to Franklin's goofiness and how it's paying homage to like these designs, but at the same time, like you can't take it completely seriously, especially when you walk into the in interior Franklin, you see all these Y's everywhere, kind of like the lamp lights on the bathrooms, on the radiators, on the staircases, and also these bright white walls and these fancy card readers. It's hard to not be reminded that this building was really made in 2017. But I really like that it's kind of goofy and um, a mix match of everything together. <laughs>